チリのみのチリよりかるきこちょうかな A body of dust, lighter than dust, little butterfly. A woman in love with a soldier. A bond broken by differing cultures and the Pacific Ocean. This is Chocho san's plight. This is the tragedy of Madama Butterfly. Join us as we delve into another Puccini classic on this episode of Opera Avengers. Opera, an art form that was created by the people, for the people, and of the people. On this episode, we will explore Madame Butterfly, the heartbreaking tale of a young woman's devotion to her faithless husband and her doomed marriage. Now, a quick word about spoilers. We believe that, unlike most other media, going into an opera already knowing the story actually enhances your enjoyment. In opera, There are so many dimensions to keep track of nuances of the singer's and orchestra's performance, the aesthetic of each individual language, costumes, set design, heck, even the entire concept behind the production, especially if it's a high concept one. Knowing the story beforehand gives you a chance to take it all in without having to worry about missing a subtitle or two. So think of our podcasts as your Cliff's Notes. And be free to enjoy every minute of high flying opera. Madame Butterfly is one of Giacomo Puccini's most well known works, second only to La Boheme. Based on a short story by John Luther Long, Puccini's opera premiered in 1904 but was very poorly received, despite the then European trend of Japonisme. Making all things related to Japan extremely popular. The composer feverishly worked on rewrites until the fifth version premiered in 1907. This fifth version is now considered the standard, most commonly performed today. The story takes place in Japan in the early 20th century, not long after American Commodore Matthew Perry made landing at the Japanese port of Nagasaki in 1853. With trade opened up to the United States, American soldiers were especially common in the port towns. Japan, though rapidly adapting to Western influence, was still an extremely traditional and patriarchal society. The ancient ideal of the perfect wife was believed to be a mother and a manager of the household, and marriages were often arranged through a process called omyai. If wives were meant to be sober, reserved guardians of the household, by contrast, geishas were expected to be carefree and largely unattached. Geishas were extremely popular. Their name literally translates as entertainer, and while commonly confused with oiran, the high class courtesans of the age, the more educated, rigorously trained geishas will entertain their clients not sexually. But with a variety of artistic endeavors, including dancing, singing, playing instruments, making tea, and casual conversation. Mai Yachou, Shamisen Rufumi, Asajibara. Dance, butterfly. Someone plays Shamisen in a Saji field. Act One introduces us to Lieutenant B. F. Pinkerton. A handsome, blonde, blue eyed U.S. naval officer stationed on the USS Abraham Lincoln. Today, Pinkerton is inspecting a house on a hill overlooking Nagasaki Harbor. Pinkerton is led by a slimy marriage broker named Goro, who has arranged a special deal for Pinkerton a humble house, which includes a butler, a cook, a maid, and a young bride. Who Pinkerton will marry today. 
Sharpless, the American consul, arrives next. Sharpless and Pinkerton discuss the deal. Pinkerton will lease the house for 999 years, with the right to renew or cancel each month. Japanese law is very flexible, he explains. Pinkerton describes himself as a fearless Yankee, roving the world in search of experience and pleasure. The non-committal American looks forward to marrying his young bride, but love's got nothing to do with it. Pinkerton compares his marriage to the lease on the house. He will honor his vows, but only for as long as he pleases. He's a true romantic, that one. Sharpless warns Pinkerton that his bride-to-be may view the marriage differently, but Pinkerton maintains that he is only marrying for convenience and will one day marry a real American wife. Here, we finally meet her, Chocho-san, a.k.a. Madam Butterfly. The 15-year-old girl climbs the hill, breathless with excitement, followed by all her family and friends. Mutsumajiya, Umani Kawarara, Nobe no Cho. Such sweet harmony, to be reborn, a meadow butterfly. Upon meeting Pinkerton, Madame Butterfly can barely contain her joy. She explains that, before becoming a geisha, her family had once been prominent, but now she only has a few earthly possessions, handkerchiefs, a mirror, trinkets, religious idols, and a long, narrow case that belonged to her father, which she can't open with so many people around. Butterfly cannot stress enough just how excited she is to marry an American. She is so eager to become an American just like him that she secretly visited the Christian mission to switch religions. What follows is a brief wedding ceremony, which consists of such classic displays of affection as official paperwork and marriage agreements. There are celebrations and toasts, but they are interrupted by a threatening voice. Stop! It's almost as if we can hear it echoing in the studio. Let's hear what the bonza, Chocho-san's uncle and a very strict Buddhist monk, had to say. Stop now! Chocho-san is an honorless coward and a disgrace to her family, just like her father. She has betrayed her ancestors. She rejected Buddha in favor of the Yankees' precious Christianity. I curse her. We all renounce you. You have renounced us, and we renounce you. You have renounced us, and we renounce you. You have renounced us, and we renounce you. Okay, back to business. Poor Madam Butterfly. The Bonza has cruelly turned her entire family against her. As night falls, she mourns her loss alone. I apologize. It appears another radio signal is interfering with... News chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on and... We now return to Madame Farfalla. Night has fallen and poor Chocho-san has burst into tears. Her new groom, Pinkerton, hastens to her side. Dearest, my dearest, weep no more. All of the bonzes in Japan are not worth a tear from those dear, sweet little eyes of yours, my little butterfly. Indeed, I'll weep no more. And now I'm scarcely grieved at their desertion. So sweet are your words of comfort, which fall like gentle balm on my heart. What's this? You kiss my hand? They tell me that, abroad, it is a token of the highest honor. Just like a little squirrel, all her pretty movements. To think that pretty plaything is mine, my wife. But her charm is so alluring. My heart is beating madly with passionate longing. Oh, my new American husband is smiling. 
Oh, could I but vanish my blushes to hide? Child, my wife, now you are all my own. How sweet are your tresses of brown in your lily-white garment. But, dear one, as yet you have not told me that you love me. Do you think that my moon goddess knows the sweet words I am yearning to hear? She knows, but perhaps will not say them, for fear she may die of her love. Fear not, my dearest, for love does not mean dying, rather living, and it radiates happiness. I see it, it shine as in your eyes. Why do you falter? The truth I must confess. When Goro came to me with your marriage offer, I was appalled. A stranger from America? A foreigner? A barbarian? Oh, forgive me. I did not know. My gentle darling, continue. But, but now, beloved, you are more than the world to me. Indeed, I liked you the very first moment that I saw you. You're so strong, so handsome. Your laugh is open and hearty. The things you say are fascinating. Now I'm happy. Yes, I am happy. Oh, love me a little, just a very little, as you would love a baby. That's all I ask for. Where I come from, people are accustomed to little, grateful for a love that's silent. Give me your darling hands, that I may kiss them. My butterfly, aptly your name was chosen. But they say that in your country, if a butterfly is caught by a man, he'll pierce its heart with a needle, and then leave it there to perish. There is some truth in that, but do you know why? So that she'll not fly away. See, I have caught you. I hold you as you flutter. You are mine. Yes. Yours forever. The night doth enfold us. See, the world lies sleeping. Ah, night of rapture! See the stars? Ah, lovely night! Stars unending! Never have I seen such glory! Throbbing, sparkling! Each star in heaven like a fiery eye is flashing! Oh! How kindly are the heavens! Every star that shines is gazing on us, lighting our future for us. Ah, come then. Come, my dearest. Cast all fear from your heart. I hold you close to my heart. You're mine now. Now let us go upstairs to consummate our marriage. My hut, the butterfly's sleeping place, tonight. A butterfly comes to my good for nothing hut. Okay then, I think we got our signal back just in time for Act 2. The year is 1907, three years after Butterfly and Pinkerton's marriage. Pinkerton is gone, having left barely a month after the wedding, promising to return to Madame Butterfly when the robin makes his nest, more commonly known as spring. Butterfly's maid, Suzuki, has grown rightly skeptical about Pinkerton's return. They're running out of money and run the risk of losing the house. Suzuki desperately prays to a statue of the Buddha for help. Butterfly, however, mocks Suzuki for praying to fat, lazy Japanese gods, having nothing but faith in her husband's return. Indeed, for the last three years, Butterfly goes to the garden every day eagerly awaiting the arrival of Pinkerton's ship. She assures Suzuki that Pinkerton arranged for Sharpless to fit the house with locks and pay their rent. Sweet, sweet, to Tsune shogatsu ya Yamome cho She had a husband when the year was new. 
widow butterfly. Kesa Akito, Gaten de Tobuka, Nobe no Cho. Are you aware that autumn has dawned, Meadow Butterfly? As if on cue, Sharpless arrives at the house carrying a letter from none other than Pinkerton. But before he can read it, Butterfly interrupts, excited by the mere mention of contact from Pinkerton. Little does she know, Goro is on his way with a potential new husband for her. We actually have a recording of what transpired during that visit. Thanks. <laughs> Who is laughing? Oh, Goro the Nakadal, a wicked fellow. Why, scarcely was my dear husband away than Goro came hither and besought me to remarry, to betray my husband. He brought half a dozen suitors. Oh, Chocho san, you are as poor as can be. All your relatives have cast you off entirely. Here comes Prince Yamadori now. He could make you a fine husband. My dear Chocho-san. Yamadori, have the throes of unrequited love not yet released you? Do you still intend to die if I withhold my kisses? There is not on earth more cruel than the pangs of hopeless love. You have had so many wives that surely you must be used to it. Every one of them I married, and divorce has set me free. But to you, I would swear eternal faith. Chocho-san, you must consider Yamadori. Servants, treasure, his home in Omara is a truly regal palace. But my hand is claimed already. She believes, she believes she's, still, she's married? still married? I don't believe it. I know it. But the law says, for the wife, desertion gives the right of divorce. That may be the law in Japan, but not in my country. Your country? Which one? The United States. Poor little creature. I know that to open the door and turn out your wife here constitutes divorce. But in America, that cannot be done. Is that not so, Sharpless? Uh, yes, yes. But... A Suzuki, bring us tea. You hear her? I am grieved at such hopeless blindness. Pinkerton's ship has already signaled. Oh no, when they meet again. But he does not want to see her. That is why I came, to try and prepare her. Well, who wants tea? No, I should go. Though my heart is heavy with sorrow, unless you would... The pity is, I will not. Then, farewell. Now at last, Madam Butterfly, if you would please be seated and read this letter through with me. The letter from Pinkerton. On my lips, on my heart, you're the best man that ever existed. Begin, I beg you. Okay. Dear friend, that's me, I beg you seek out that child, that pretty flower. Oh, does he r truly say that? Yes, he, he truly says so, but if you keep interrupting so... Oh, I'll be quiet and listen. Those were happy days together. Three years are gone by since. Uh, three years? Then he too has counted? Ahem. <clears throat> Uh, perhaps dear Butterfly remembers me no more. I do not remember. Suzuki, tell him quickly. Remembers me no more. Oh, patience. If she still cares for me and expects me. Oh, what glorious tidings. Blessed letter. On you, that's me, I am relying to act discreetly and with tact and with caution to prepare her. He's coming! Tell me! Quickly! Quickly! Oh, I can't. That devil of a Pinkerton. 
Now say, Madame Butterfly, what would you do if he were never to return again? Well, then I, I might die. I do not wish to tear you from such beguiling illusions, but I urge you to accept the hand of Prince Yamadori. You? You tell me this? You? Look here, then. Look here. Can such as he well be forgotten? Good Lord. A child? Is it Pinkerton's? Hmm, what Japanese baby ever was born with azure eyes, I wonder? Such lips, too. And such a head of golden ringlets. Does Pinkerton know? No. I bore him when he was far off in his native country. But you will write and tell him here awaits a son who has no equal. Tell me then that he won't hasten over land and sea. Poor faithless soul. Child, what do they call you? His name is now Dolore. It means sorrow. But upon my husband's return, joy will be his name. The father shall be told. This I promise. I must be going. Goodbye, Madame Butterfly. Kusano Cho Oamadare no Kakaru Nari A meadow butterfly bombarded by big raindrops from the eaves. Shortly after, Suzuki bursts into the room, dragging Goro. She had found him roaming the town, spreading rumors that Butterfly's child has no father. Goro explains that a fatherless child is doomed to be outcast and shunned. Furious, Butterfly runs to the shrine and finally opens the box that belonged to her father, revealing a harakiri dagger. She threatens to stab Goro. Wow, this is getting dramatic. Let's take a short musical break.
and we're back. Don't worry, Butterfly didn't stab Goro, she just kicked him out of the house. Butterfly and Suzuki run to the garden, where they are amazed to see the USS Abraham Lincoln. Pinkerton has made port. Butterfly is overjoyed. Finally, she can prove Goro, Sharpless, Yamadori, and everyone else wrong. In her joy, she and Suzuki take flower petals from the garden and use them to decorate the house in honor of Pinkerton's return. Butterfly, Suzuki, and the child wait in the garden all night, but Pinkerton doesn't stop by. Though Suzuki and Dolore fall asleep, Butterfly fights through fatigue, loyally watching over the harbor. Dawn breaks on Act 3. Suzuki insists that Butterfly finally gets some sleep. Butterfly obliges, carrying her child to another room. Kako no yakusoku ga yoso de nineru kocho. A previous life spawned, little butterfly, on my sleeve, asleep. Just then, there is a knock on the door. Suzuki answers to find Sharpless, Pinkerton, and Kate, Pinkerton's new wife. Pinkerton knows about Butterfly's child, and his new, real American wife has graciously agreed to raise him. Then, Pinkerton finds the decorations lovingly put up to celebrate his return. These bring him to remember his few but enjoyable days in the humble house. Overcome with guilt, he admits his cowardice and flees, leaving Suzuki and Sharpless to break the news to Butterfly. Butterfly rushes in, hoping to find Pinkerton, but she meets Kate instead. Kate explains that she is willing to care for Dolore as if he was her own son. Madame Butterfly surprisingly agrees, but she dismisses everyone, insisting that Pinkerton returns for the child himself. Butterfly, look, parents and child. Three, sleep together. Everyone leaves. Now, Butterfly is left with nothing. No husband. No friends. No family. Not even her honor. She turns to her shrine, praying to the ancestral gods she forsook in favor of her uncaring husband. But no help comes. She retrieves her father's dagger, the dagger with which he killed himself after being ordered to by the emperor, and reads the inscription on the handle, Who cannot live without honor must die with honor. She brings the blade to her throat. Mame hodo no hito araware shi kocho kana. A little person enters the scene, a little butterfly. Tepo no san, jakusaki no ko, jo kana. Three feet from the musket's barrel, little butterfly. Then, Dolore enters. Butterfly lowers the dagger and turns to her son. She hands him an American flag, wraps a blindfold over his eyes, and tells him to go play. Finally alone, Madame Butterfly walks behind a screen, raises the knife, and slits her throat. She dies as Pinkerton calls her name, and so the curtain falls on another tragic Puccini masterwork. Hazukashi ya chou wa hira hira tsune higan. What a shame.
the butterfly flits off to the other shore. The tragic story has endured the test of time, not least because of the political commentary of the human consequences of Western colonization. However, at its heart, Madame Butterfly is the tale of a woman devoted to her love and her dreams, who is promptly abandoned by both. She makes the ultimate sacrifice in a cruel situation, so that even a part of her, her child, has the chance for the future she always wanted. If you want to see Madame Butterfly in person, be sure to check out Opera Circle's production on June 13th at 7.30pm at the Ohio Theatre in Playhouse Square. Opera Avengers is a production of the Great Lakes Light Opera, an organization based out of Cleveland, Ohio, dedicated to bringing opera and all local musical arts to everyone. The haiku were read by Sean Head and written by Kobayashi Isa. The voices of the Bonza, Yamadori, and Sharpless were performed by Nick Farmer. The voices of Pinkerton and Goro were performed by Cal Lemon. And the voice of Chocho-san was Megan Thompson. If you want to check out more amazing music being produced in Cleveland, visit composer Sean Head's website at www.seanheadmusic.com. Want to learn more? Visit us at greatlakeslightopera.com. Want to help out? Check out our donation page or email us at greatlakeslightopera1 at gmail.com. Oh, and let us know what you'd like to hear next.